Hi everyone, I'm instructor Diana Gonzalez and today we're going to discuss savings for future goals. This is the first video for this section. Before we get into this uh, driving a rule for savings, we first need to talk about effective rate. Understanding effective rate will allow us to come up with our savings rule. So what is effective rate? Let's think about it this way. Suppose we compound money for a specific length of time. The effective rate is the rate that when we would apply this on, our, on the same amount of money using simple interest, it would earn us the exact same amount that we earned using compound interest. So what this means is the effective rate should be higher than the compound interest rate because as we discussed before, compound interest grows faster than simple interest. So we're going to need the effective rate to make up for the slowness of the simple interest method. Now, when we find the effective rate for one year, that is what is called the APY, or the annual percent yield. So, some food for thought. When would we want a high APY, and when would we want a low APY? Well, when we're saving, this is a situation where we would want a high APY, because we want to make more money. Now, when we're borrowing, we're not the ones making money, we're the ones paying, so this is a situation where we would want a low APY. Keep that in mind. Let's explore APY and effective rate with this example. We want to find the annual percent yield of an account that pays 10% annual interest rate compounded daily. From the compound interest method, we have a rule. We can use this rule to determine the effective rate. We're not given a principal amount, but a principal amount is not needed. What we are given is the 10% interest rate, compounded daily, 365, and then we're finding the annual percent yield as stated in the definition. This is for one year, so t equals one. From here, we get the principal times 1.1516. By now, we should be very familiar with this structure. The one is representing the original amount, so our new rate is represented by the decimal portion, and the rate is 10.516%. So what does this mean? This is our amount accumulated through compound interest, and this exact same amount can be achieved with simple interest if we have the rate of 10.516% for one year. So this expression is equal to this expression. And that is how effective rate works. Notice, as I stated earlier, the rate using compound interest is lower than the rate in simple interest. So we earn the exact same amount of money using compound interest and using uh, simple interest. But in order to earn that same amount with simple interest, we needed to increase the rate so that it can make up for the slow pace of the simple interest. What we have concluded is that 10% compounded daily is the same as 10.516% uh, applied using the simple interest formula to the exact same amount. So 10.516% is the effective rate. And then as stated earlier, when the effective rate is annual, so for just one year, this is also the APY. Thus, we have found the APY for this scenario. Now from the example, we're able to then derive a rule. What we did in the previous example was we determined how much money we were going to accumulate through compounding. And that's this portion. That is the accumulated amount. Then what we did was we removed the original amount, the P, or in our case, it was represented by the one. And that is what gave us our effective rate. Now something that we should have noticed in the example was there was no need to take into consideration the principal amount. So we can strip the principal amount away from our formula, thus the rule for effective rate is going to be 1 plus r over m and this quantity raised to the m minus 1. As mentioned earlier, we do not need to know the principal amount, and next we can use this formula to derive a rule for savings. You will see that on the next video.